Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with a video I'm calling Hamster with a Mouthful of Pizza, which may mean that this is the worst named video on YouTube because nobody is going to search for that on YouTube to find this video. But there you go. It's a stamp set from Art Impressions, has all kinds of things you can put in the cute hamster's mouth. And it comes with dies for all the things that you can cut out and put in there. But you also have the, the dies for his mouth and his little hands. That's how you put them in his mouth. And here's how the dies work. Just put it right over top of the stamped image. I used big green tape. Don't use green tape. Use like washi tape because it was a little hard to pull off. Almost ripped my paper, but I didn't. And there we go. So the pizza I'm going to be able to tuck in under the die cutting portions to be able to make it look like he's holding that. You could mask it. I'm not going to say you can't mask it to make that happen, but the dies are way easier. I can tell you I did try filming it with the masking and that was a silly adventure in trying to stamp portions of images and that sort of thing. So I would not recommend that. Don't do it the hard way. Do it the easy way, especially since it comes with the dies. I don't know what I was thinking, trying to do an alternate version, but there you go. I've blocked in my colors for my little hamster based on something I saw on Google. I went to find the cutest hamsters I could find because I really wanted to color this guy. This is one of those stamp sets that I just like I had to color him because he's so cute and I might have to color him a few more times with different markings because he's adorable. I often thought that I wanted a hamster for years and I just never did because I don't know how to take care of little critters like that. I know how to take care of critters who are like big and go to parks and jump on my bed and but not little guys like they're too reliant on you. They have just a little cage and if you don't give them what they need in their little cage they, I don't even know if they know how to ask you for what they need. I don't know. So I just never felt up to the challenge of raising a hamster but now I can at least color one. So I'm using the E5 series of Copic markers in order to make my fur and I'm making little flick marks with progressively longer marks. You saw that the dark ones were really, really short, barely even just nicks on the paper. And then as I get toward this E5-5, just start spreading that shading out more and more. And it gives me a really soft look. I'm going to go back in with another marker too to blend that even further but this is really working to make him look look cute and don't forget that little divot right there above his eyebrows that little divot just made it look really cute oh my gosh yeah i'm i'm tickled with my coloring on this one i have to apologize i don't usually fawn over watching my own coloring while i'm doing voiceover but i think i did this one pretty sweet he looks like he's got a lot of character so i really enjoyed coloring him so watch on instagram maybe i'll have him colored a couple different ways with a couple of the other stamps in the set or I'll post them on my blog too if I get them done by t by the time this video goes live because he's fun to color and it'd be fun to do him a bunch of different ways. we are adding now some more of the E53 not just to blend the colors that are there but to add some roundness to his jowls and the rest of his body that sort of thing and leave his nose area nice and white because if I put some color elsewhere then it emphasizes the parts that are white 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 so Give him a little bit more around, down around his little feet, down around his little hands, darken up his feet just a little tiny bit, and then move over to the pizza. Now pizza, I had this internal debate, debate with myself, like the pizza that I eat usually has all of the toppings underneath of the cheese because I'm really boring with my pizza. But this has lots of stuff on it, so I kind of put some of the yellow on top of some of the the toppings so that they're kind of half covered in cheese. I don't know. I, maybe you guys can have a debate in the comments section about whether or not the cheese should cover everything. I personally like it when the cheese covers all the stuff on my pizza. But I'm also a boring pizza eater, so I, I have to take that into account. I'm, I'm very boring that way. I really just like a good old pepperoni pizza, good old cheese pizza is all good with me. I don't need a million things on it. So here's how it slides into his little mouth. Look how cute that is. He could just eat little pizza until he gets even fatter. So I decided he needed a little more punchy color. So I grabbed a really bright, uh, really deep kind of red to add a little bit more to the pizza. And then I decided to, to like add a little more pink to his hands and his feet so they stand out more from the pizza crust. 
And then I had a genius idea. I wanted to pop it up so that it sort of looks like it's out more, like his hands are above a little bit. So I put some of this, these uh, Tombow power tabs, I put a little piece, a little sliver underneath of his paws, his little hands, and then put the pizza on top of that and then kind of tucked it right underneath the edge of his little little paws so that it lifts up just slightly and it's going to look like like his hands come forward and the pizza comes forward it was a really cute little touch now you could stop your card right here because that's adorable he's a really cute little hamster or you could be like me and do a scene because you can't help yourself and he needed to be in a scene so I fought with the scene a little bit. You'll see me change some things as we go because I was having some issues with my perspective. Those who are in the drawing class and know a little bit about perspective will know that I'm, I'm just having some challenges here, but that's okay because that's what perspective is all about. These scenes that I have on my cards, I often have no idea what's coming out. I just knew I wanted him sitting on a kitchen counter beside a pizza box because he had just been sneaky and stole a piece of pizza. I struggled with what color should the inside of the box be. I struggled with how big should the box be. I, I, yeah. Okay, there you go. You're, you're getting inside my head what's going on when I'm having problems with, <laughs> with the scene. But there you go. I'm adding the word pizza to the box. Note that the pizza also has to be in perspective, my students. Just so you know that. You don't want to end up having one thing in perspective and not have the other thing in perspective. So then we have the kitchen wall back there. I'm just trying to knock it back further by getting it darker. So there's more contrast to it. And then on the inside, I put more pizza because then the sentiment makes sense. So there we have a very silly card that no one will ever find except for you on YouTube. So make sure you hit the like button because if nobody else ever finds it, this video will just fade away into the annals of history. So consider yourself very special that you found it and you got to watch it today. So have a really awesome day. Go watch another video, maybe one that's a little more findable and that sort of thing. Maybe something that will inspire you to go make something. I want to see you make something and go send it to somebody else because snail mail is dying. We want to revive it and we can do that as crafters. I'll see you later. Bye.